This is the 19th Gene Key, The Future Human Being, City of Sacrifice, Gift of Sensitivity, Shadow is Codependence. The 19th City, Sacrifice. It's also part of the Ring of Gaia, 1960 and 61. The 19th City, Sacrifice. The fifth initiation, the Annunciation. The path of frequency through the 19th gift goes from codependence to independence and finally to interdependence. Interdependence represents a quantum leap beyond the other two and is its realization is the future destiny of our species. In many ways, it is the 19th shadow of codependence that contains the seed of the 19th city of sacrifice. In a codependent relationship, both partners have sacrificed a part of their true selves to the relationship and the resulting lack of synthesis they feel drives the negative patterns in the relationship. In a relationship that is truly interdependent, both partners also sacrifice their sense of individuality into a higher version of their divinity, holding nothing back for themselves at all. The true meaning of interdependence is about entering into a state of union with all beings in the cosmos, which involves the death of the separate self. This kind of sacrifice can only occur when you give your heart unconditionally to another. Instead of dying, you are actually reborn as a higher dimensional being. In surrendering your smaller self, you attain realization of your greater self. Through the 19th gene key, you can see how each level of frequency has to transcend itself entirely. Once humans overcome their codependence on outside agencies, they finally achieve independence. Likewise, once they attain independence, they have to take another great leap to give up their hard-earned independence and trust the totality itself. This surrender to the collective structure involves sacrifice, the highest level of the word's meaning. This is the sacrifice of your separate identity and perhaps far more frightening for the separate self. It is the sacrifice of your body. The 19th city shares a profound connection with the 49th city of rebirth. These two cities represent the key mystical process that will eventually overtake the human species. Great secrets are held within the world's great myths, and here we can see the myth of sacrifice. The Norse Odin hanging upside down on the world tree, or Christ hanging on the cross. All, sacrifice, all sacrificial myths lead to a rebirth, and all such myths are anthropomorphies anthropomorphoses, I'm not sure of that word, which uh, A-N-T-H-R-O-P-O-M-O-R, let <laughs> me say this again, I, an, anthropomorphies, A-N-T-H-R-O-P-O-M-O-R-P-H-I-S-E-S, -E I don't like that one, <laughs> uh, all such myths are that word of a deep genetic secret hidden within human DNA. As we have seen, this 19th gene key has a deep connection with the animal kingdom. Humanity has evolved out of the animal realm. We are the result of a series of genetic mutations that took place in primates and finally led to the creation of a new species, Homo sapiens. Through this 19th city, you can see how consciousness has traveled through form after form, each time creating a more complex form in order to house a higher frequency than the previous one. At each level within the chain, a higher form has lived off the form below in order to keep evolving. Life is thus a living chain of sacrifice. Earth is really a breeding ground for a series of genetic leaps that parallel the awakening of our full spiritual realization. Our awareness is like a series of Russian dolls. As we make each leap in awareness, we come to realize we are housed within a wider framework than we had previously understood. There are a total of nine dimensions that our earth has to move through. And as we pass through each of these initiations, we have to sacrifice our smaller local self before finally being born as a true universal human being. Consciousness is now beginning to outstrip man and is reaching out for a higher form. And the new form must emerge out of the old one. So deep within human DNA, new mutations are being triggered. This is one of the main reasons for the vast population explosion on the planet. Our genes require the maximum diversity in order to trigger a genetic mutation potent enough to reshape Homo sapiens into something quite different. It is also the reason why so many new diseases are emerging through our DNA. They are all early mutations, precursors of what is to follow. Through the 19th city, it is not only the individual that must sacrifice him or herself into the whole, but also the whole human species that must be sacrificed. Everything we see happening in the world around us, from pollution to global warning, warming to wars and to social upheaval, is a result of a profound genetic process we are undergoing. For those that, with the 19th city, the focus is always on the future needs of humanity rather than the current needs. These people understand what it is to come as well 
These people understand what is to come as well as what we must go through. Such people stand alone as heralds of a future consciousness, and their lives are a magnificent example of sacrifice to that consciousness. They emerge during times of great mutation, since they themselves are in a grip of that mutation. With their hypersensitive mutated DNA, they see the new form emerging and do their utmost to prepare people for the coming conscious shift. They are highly sensitized bridges to the new human and have the ability to siphon information about the new paradigm from behind the veil of the future into the present. Every city has to make its sacrifice in this way because each of them represent a being from the future that works in the present. The 19th city contains the secret of mystical initiation. Every aspect of the Earth's consciousness must move through the nine portals of initiation before our collective planetary evolution comes to an end. Each of this initiation is explored in more depths within the 22nd gene key. The nine portals of planetary initiation, birth, Baptism, confirmation, matrimony, annunciation, communion, ordination, sacrifice, sanctification, glorification. I'll say it one more time. Birth, rebirth. Oop, say that again. Birth, baptism, confirmation, matrimony, annunciation, communion, ordination, sanctification, glorification. Each initiation brings us into a wider awareness of our independent interdependence. Each initiation brings us into a wider awareness of our interdependence with the whole. When the 19th city manifests in form, then a great being makes an individual sacrifice on behalf of the whole. This is the mystery and hidden meaning of the life of Christ. Through an individual sacrifice, the 19th city allows the entire collective to pass through a group initiation. We can see how the Christians write Hold, the Christian rites hold the codes of the great initiations, even though they have been effectively frozen into structures that have little or nothing to do with the initiations themselves, which occur organically and usually over the course of many incarnations. The ring of Gaia, then, of which this gene key is a vital aspect, connects all earth beings on this same initiation journey, initiatory journey. As the ultimate form manifests of Gaia, humanity stands on the cusp of one of the greatest initiations, the fifth initiation of Annunciation. Mystically speaking, this great initiation has to do with the con concept of a holy child within the body of humanity. Thus, the whole humanity must sacrifice its independence for a higher version. This mystical Annunciation can only take place through the synarchy, the communion of evolved souls who collectively pioneer this great sacrificial impulse. The 19th city will be one of the first cities that awakens in a man at a collective level or they will awaken in man at a collective level. As soon as a great mutation has occurred within humanity, we pass through the fifth initiation. We will see what kind of shift has taken place. One of the traits of the new human will be the incredible sensitivity that is far beyond being psychic. The awareness in such a being will not recognize itself as being separate from other human beings. Thus, they will work for all of humanity without caring for themselves. Although we call that sacrifice, it is not so for them, since they will know no other way to live. This 19th city is a herald of the future form that will house higher frequencies of consciousness, and as such, it displays a great inadequacy of our language. Just as our language has evolved out of our reliance on the five senses, future forms will operate through entirely different language. Current human language is auditory, but future forms will communicate through their environment using a sense that is closer to what we call touch. This is the true language of Gaia, the interconnective auric tissue that brings all beings of the planetary sphere into full awareness of their inherent unity. The 19th gift is sensitivity, the whisperers. The gift of sensitivity is about being highly attuned to the needs of others. In order to be able to sense others and their needs, you must first become independent from them, which is what the 19th gift is about. The moment you reach the frequency of independence, your natural energy becomes apparent. This 19th gift is also a gift of touch. It does not have to be a literal touch, although it can be. Many of these people are gifted healers and therapists. It is more than just a physical sense of touch, but a touch with people as well as animals. As we learn from its shadows, this gene key is rooted in material need, and when you elevate the frequency from your own needs, you suddenly become aware of the needs of everything and everyone around you. This makes the 19th gift a great environmental barometer. There is a rare phenomenon in human beings known as synthesia, S-Y-N-A-E-S-T-H-E-S-I-A. Synthesia is the genetic ability to link different senses internally. For example, to smell with your eyes or sense colors with your hands. It is actually deeply connected to the 19th gift and can often be activated when a higher frequency passes through this gene key. 
Synthesia is a byproduct of increased sensitivity to your sensory environment. If this 19th gift is an aspect of your hologenetic profile, then it is highly possible that you may discover latent abilities that allow you to feel deeply into your environment, and in particular, to sense the emotional pattern and needs of others through the living auric field. Many artists and healers have the kind of gift and can sense the hidden higher energy fields through their fingers and through their skin or hair. Sensing these fields in nature allows you to see a completely different world from most people a world of energy fluctuations, intense colors, moods, and internal pressure patterns. In the deepest sense, the higher frequencies of the 19th gene key have access to the realms of magic. We may recall the 19th shadow finds its basis in the human dependence on external food. The 19th gift simply shifts, shifts this perspective to a higher level. At a higher frequency, food is really life energy, and what the ancients call prana, or chi. This gift allows your increased sensitivity to this living bioenergy that connects all creatures. When, our, when your heart and being opens to sense the abundance of this energy throughout nature, you become for the first time emotionally independent. Only the activations of the love inside your own DNA gives you this wider sense of being. Furthermore, because this 19th gene key is one of the first places in the human genome where the great change is having an immediate impact, the movement from codependence to independence is something we see increasingly throughout our home human cultures. In its early stages, it is not an easy passage. Suddenly, having increased sensitivity to your environment makes you more aware than ever of your own tendencies toward codependence. Even though you may have opened your heart to the great change, most of the world still has not done so, which puts you in a position of great responsibility, not to mention discomfort. We are seeing such responses to the great change all across our culture today as human beings become more aware of how much damage our codependence is doing to our environment. The 19th gene key is a genetic portal into the unconscious and particularly into the collective unconscious. Interestingly, this gift seems to be having strong activations in cultures that live close to nature, such as indigenous cultures. In such tribal groups, there has always been an increased sensitivity to those regions, re regions that are beyond the five senses. What modern humans often interpret as naivety in such cultures is in fact a heightened genetic sensitivity to the quantum reality of the unconscious. As this gene key reawakens in humanity, we see changes in our dream life and through this portal, we can reconnect with our ancient sense of that magic and the sense of the magic that comes through dreams. People with the 19th gift are often shamans because they're of their increased sensitivity to other worlds and other realms. The 19th gene key is one of the three primary portals along with the 62 and 12th gene key that allow humanity access to other evolutionary kingdoms within nature. These kingdoms, which are have often been referred to as the angelic or devic realms, devic, D-E-V-I-C realms, are planes of consciousness that follow a similar evolutionary pattern of humanity but in parallel dimensions. The 19th gene key behaves like a genetic marker in human DNA, and only when you hit a certain genetic frequency does that marker activate the portal, allowing information to cross clearly between these parallel worlds. Certain human beings have always been credited or indeed discredited with the ability to see fairies or hear voices of spirits or angels. This is a genetic ability that comes specifically through the 19th gift. Of course, the 19th shadow has had its low frequency counterparts, which can cause human beings to tune into the lower or subterranean kingdoms often known as the demon realm. As a matter of fact, most human beings are directly influenced by these parallel evolutions, whether they realize it or not. Only a higher virtuous fr frequency allows you to become independent of these shadow forces, which otherwise pull you again and again into your lower frequency patterns and emotional states. The 19th gift has a particularly powerful link with the mammal kingdom. Because it acts as a portal between the unconscious and conscious realms, those who know how to use this portal can access information from other realms apart from the human. Since this gene key has such sense traditionally, since this gene key has evolved from humanity's relationship to food, it has also evolved out of our relationship to nature. Since traditionally we killed animal for food, especially mammals, this ancient sacrificial relationship between humans and animals is actually based upon a timeless sacred pact between the two species. Those with sensitivity will know the future destiny of this cross species contract. Most tribal cultures contain legends of a time when animals and humans were a single consciousness. And in the future, this is our eventual destiny to once again enter the collective quantum field where both humans and animals coexist. Mm -hmm. In this ancient connection in our DNA between other mammals and humans, that is the origin of the whisperers. Specifically gifted people who can communicate with animals or who can act as a bridge between entirely different species. 
Such people can tune into ancestral gene pools of certain species and often feel a profound connection to nature at a deep level than ordinary people. In tribal societies, the shaman's specific skill was to bridge the ancestral spirit behind the tribe to the individual within the tribe. This is a direct reflection of the function of the 19th gift. People with these gifts have always been humanity's natural interpreters of other realms. These increased awareness of the energetic pathways and portal between all realms, material, emotional, mental, and divine, mark them as the pioneers, initiators of the magical realms. In today's world, people with the 19th gift are likely to use their sensitivity in any field where people are working together in groups. Their abilities to unconsciously sense the needs of others mean that they are often seen as psychic. However, they can also be very grounded in the reality of the needs on the material plane. For example, they can use their heightened sensitivity to bring balance to the spheres of money, work, and relationships. In fact, their very present brings focus to these kinds of issues. This gift truly spans all realms and its future function, as we shall see, is to collapse barriers that separate separate them, thus fusing together the ancient mystical realms with the modern material plane. The 19th shadow, codependence, the great change. Along with the 49th and 55th shadows, the 19th shadow is perhaps the most topical shadow of our current age. We are living through a time of unprecedented global mutation. This mutation is on many different levels from the most physical to the most spiritual. To truly capture the essence of what is occurring to humanity, one needs to look not so much at the spiritual dimension, but at the opposite end of the spectrum, the biogenetic. The biogenetic. The mind of man is steeped in causality. As long as we recognize a cause, we believe there is a purpose. If you are a geneticist, everything you look at appears to serve the purpose of the evolution of life, whereas if you're a mystic, everything serves the purpose of the evolution of consciousness. For millennia, humanity has tried to understand the purpose of life from the spiritual dimension, but until very recently, we have not had the ability to understand the purpose of life from the material dimension. With the advent of genetics, we are beginning to see the microprocesses that drive evolution itself. A scientist may say that man's spiritual evolution comes about as a result of his biological evolution. The mystic tends to see it the opposite way around. What is fascinating about the scientific view is that it focuses on the lower frequency realms, the realm of matter. The 19th shadow represents an aspect of the genome that is currently undergoing an intense mutation. A mutation that is spontaneous and suddenly and spontaneous and usually sudden quantum leap from one state to another. In genetics, mutations are often the mistakes that happen when genes copy one another. Such mistakes can lead to fascinating new chemical combinations, which can in turn lead to the evolution of entirely new forms. The 19th shadow of codependence has its roots deep within our tribal ancestral past. Codependence refers to the state of consciousness below independence. To be independent means to rely upon oneself, whereas to be codependent means to rely on outside agencies. As primitives, we primarily relied upon nature for our survival, and because we relied on an outside agency, we anthropomorphized it. In other words, we created gods to represent that agency. Thus, it is out of the 19th shadow that all world religions have been born. Our relationship with God and or a set of gods is a purely codependent relationship because it is based on this need for outside authority. It is here in this 19th gene key that one of the great human stories is coded, the story of our relationship to God. As long as man believes in a God outside of himself, the frequency of our planet will remain at the level of the 19th shadow. The vibration of human suffering depends upon the existence of a separate authority of a higher frequency than us. This last sentence is the ultimate definition of what it means to be a victim, which is what is characterized which was what characterizes the shadow frequency. So I'll say it again. The vibration of human suffering depends upon the existence of a separate authority of a higher frequency than us. The programming partner to the 19th shadow is the 33rd shadow of forgetting. In creating the God out there, we've forgotten the power that lies dormant within us. The ultimate reliance we have outside ourselves is on food. God has always been about food, and food has always been about territory. Food production was based upon tribal territory, which is why the different nations and cultures developed it in the first place. But today, at least in the developed world, food is no longer food no longer has to come from our own tribe. It can be flown in from anywhere in the world. For one thing, our dietary needs have changed as we learn to manipulate our environment with great efficiency. Through through science, sciences such as nuclear physics and genetics, humanity is beginning to play God more and more and is thus moving from a state of codependence to a state of independence. Because we can now outwit the gods of modern technology, we no longer need them as much. The more advanced the society, the deeper we question God as an outside agency. 
However, the 19th shadow is currently undergoing a huge genetic, mo genetic mutation, which means that man's reliance on religion is also undergoing a transformation. The old tribal fears of not having enough are dying, and with them, the great religions. The breaking of such a deep-seated and ancient codependent relationship has powerful repercussions of, for our world. The old ways must die to the new. Such is the purpose of mutation, the process of one destruction. Only as the dust finally settles will the new creation become fully realized. The reason all of this can seem so terrifying is that it represents a fork in our evolutionary development in which an entirely new path is opening, a path in which human beings will have to leave behind the old tribal codependent ways. The whole world is divided into those who are becoming more independent and those who will cling to the comfort of old ways. On a global level, we are beginning to see this made manifest now in the battle between globalization and fractalism. Fractalism, fractionalism, F-A-C-T-I-O-N-A-L-I-S-M, and between science and religion. For us as individuals, the transformation of the 19th shadow will see its deepest manifestation in our relationships. The old style of codependent relationships of the working husband and homebound wife are giving way to a new level of independence. The liberation of women is changing the infrastructure of our civilization and children are increasingly cared for collectively so that both mother and father retain a higher level of independence. Whether we like this or not, it is occurring all across the developed world. Our children are growing up as the children of society rather than children of a single tribal family. Because of this huge genetic shift taking place across the board, male-female relationship dynamics are more challenging than ever. A great change is coming and roles are changing to accommodate the birth of a new paradigm. Although it may be difficult birth, in the not-too-distant future, the 19th shadow will have disappeared entirely from our world. The contemporary mutation moving through the 19th gene key is having an unprecedented effect on all life of our planet. As a vital aspect of the codon ring of Gaia, along with the 60th and 61st gene key, it is breaking down the very patterns of the world psyche. The reactive rigidity of the 60th shadow and the psychosis of the 61st shadow have a long held sway on our planet. A great reaction is occurring within the chemistry of our DNA as the old ways appear to tighten their grip on the only reality they have known. There's an enormous fear being gen generated by the shadow of this codon ring and the enormous potential violence as our codependence is broken. However, the truth is that all life and all, all life is and always has been interdependent because all life is one. Even independence is an illusion, and this realization is bringing an end to the world psychosis that operates out of the 19th shadow's low-frequency survival-based reality. It is through the Ring of Gaia that we must and will eventually see and will live once again in the union with all beings that share this planet Earth. The repressive nature is needy. The repressive nature of the 19th shadow emerges as neediness or clinging. These people cannot let go of past out of fear of being alone. This creates catastrophic relationship dynamics based on making other people's victims of their needs. Repressive natures can be very cunning with the way they transmit their shadow patterns. These people will very likely use subtle tools such as guilt to get their own needs, needs met. They need to feel needed and they will act out of all, they will act out all cords, kinds of dramas, often totally unconscious to get the attention they crave. They are masters of negative attention, drawing other people's energy towards them without caring what expression it takes. Even violence is a form of attention. The only way to break out of such pattern is to move into independence. The reactive nature, isolated. The angry expression of this gene key is isolationist. These people refuse any attention, loudly proclaiming that they don't need anyone. Such a nature only pretends to be independent while beneath the surface they seethe with rage. Of course, people that isolate themselves like this always take great care to do it right before everyone else's eyes. They make a point of showing how they make a point of showing you how alone they are, craving the attention it brings them and becoming even more in in embittered embittered when others leave them alone ironically when others do try to support them or offer them friendship they usually explode projecting all their pent-up anger onto the other person it is easy to see how the repressive and reactive nature together create the perfect dynamic of a typical dysfunctional codependent relationship the end of jinky 19.